My name is Victoria Gonzalez and I'm the Director of School and Community Initiatives for Special Olympics New Mexico. Today we did our partner training for our Young Athletes program and Young Athletes is a dynamic sports play curriculum. It's a great program for both the students with disabilities and without disabilities. My name is Pita Hopkins. Uh, I'm an uh, adapted PE teacher, retired. Um, I'm also a Special Olympics coach. The benefit for both the gen ed kids and my special needs students has been tremendous. The relationships that they have developed has been awesome. It's really created a culture of, of students who really advocate for our special needs population. The Young Athlete Program gave them up an, an opportunity to see the young athletes as people, not with problems, but people that learned differently and needed help, extra help in learning their, the skills that they were teaching them in the Young Athlete Program. Hey, good afternoon guys. We're here to do our training for the Young Athletes Program, okay? So how many of you guys here do sports? Good. Let's see what kind of sports you do. What sport do you do? Um, I do basketball. Basketball? Football. Football? Football. Football? Soccer. Soccer. Basketball. Soccer. Soccer and dance. Soccer and dance. Softball. Softball. Cheer. Cheer. Soccer. Soccer. Karate and volleyball. Karate and volleyball. Football, ba basketball, and baseball. Football, basketball, baseball. Cheer. Cheer. Football. Football. Soccer. Soccer. Basketball. Basketball. Soccer and gymnastics. Soccer and gymnastics. So you guys are all a bunch of athletes. So who is our who were my football players? Okay, football players, did you guys just start playing football and just go out there and do a game right away? I've been playing for three years. Three years. Did you go do a game right away? Just like two years. I never really practiced, but did you I practiced. So what did you do? Did you just, the first time you started playing football, did you go to a game? What about my basketball players? Did you just go to a game right away? No, what did you do? Yeah, you had a practice. And what, why do you have practice? What do you do at practice? Um, you practice so that, you're, so that you know what you're doing in the game. So you learn about the game. What else do you do at practice? You have to, uh, you have to practice to get better at it. You, Practice to get better. What else do you do? Because, well, because practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. And what are you doing at practice? Are you playing a full game every practice? You just go and do a game? No, what are you doing? You're working on stuff. You're working on stuff. And what is that stuff called? What's the stuff you work on? You work on skills. Skills. You work on skills. So in basketball, give me an example. What's a skill in basketball? Yeah, but even before that, what's a skill in basketball? Um, learning how to dribble. How to dribble? What else is a skill? Um, learning, um, running, learning how to run. To run? Yeah. So, do you only work on skills? What else do you work on in practice? Like, what are you working on to get better at? Like, conditioning. Conditioning. So you're getting healthier, you're staying active. And when you go to this practice, is it just you and your teammates? It's your coach. Okay, so what's a coach's role? Mm, you. Um, to teach the team, like try and teach them how to dribble and. Yeah. So a coach teaches. What else does a coach do? Help you understand. Helps you to understand. Learn about the game. What else does a coach do? Encourages you. Encourages you. Yep. So if I was your basketball coach and I just went to practice and I just said I'm great at basketball, everybody look. I'm just going to shoot all day long. Is that a good coach? No. No? Why not? Because you're showing off. Yeah, just showing off. So in this, in young athletes, you guys are going to be the coaches. So it's going to be your job to teach the skills so we can get these, the littler kids, so we can teach them how to do sports. So we've already said it. Let's see if we remember. What's going to be your job as a coach? We're going to? Uh, encourage. Encourage. So we said encourage, what else? Teach. Teach. 
and help them and then have fun. Exactly, exactly. You guys are already pros at this. You know exactly what you need to do. So how do you teach? How do you teach something? Um, you show them how to do it. You show them how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do something. And I need two volunteers. Let's get you in the soccer shirt and you in the soccer shirt. Okay, so I'm going to teach you guys a dance, okay? So I teach them by showing them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to teach it to you. Ready? Go ahead. Did you feel prepared? No. Why not? I just taught it to you, right? Did I teach it to them? No, not really. No, why not? You didn't tell them like step by step. Okay, so is showing enough to teach? No. Good job, guys. Thank you. So showing is not enough to teach, right? So just by showing something is not enough to teach. What else do you have to do? You have to tell. You have to be speaking and explain it. What else could I have done? You can't go super fast. You can't go fast. You can't show how it's done. What do we do? How do we slow it down? We take step by step. You break it into step by step. You guys are already good at this. So when you teach something, you can, it's good to show. You can show, but you also have to explain and you have to break it down step by step, okay? So what if I'm really good at something? Does that mean that I don't need to be coached? No. But if I already know how to do it, then what are you gonna teach me? How to do it better, maybe? How to do it better. What else could you do for me as a coach? Teach you more stuff to make you even better today. Yeah, you can challenge you more. What else could you do? You can encourage. Encourage, that's always important. Okay, so, who was one of my basketball players? Right here. Okay. So, can you teach me how to dribble? So, first you have to um, get the ball and you have to like hit it down hard enough to um, to okay. for it to bounce up, but, okay. but not too hard because then <laughs> did I do it? Did I do? Okay. Yeah. So, did I understand your directions? No. No, probably not, right? So, whenever someone does something and you laugh, what do you think that tells me? It, um, you're doing it wrong and they think it's funny. And you they think it's funny. So, well, I could get embarrassed or I could think it's funny and I could make, want to make you laugh, right? Mm -hmm. So, Remember to try to not laugh when someone has a reaction, okay? So what else can you do to teach me how to dribble? You have to like have it be like, like, not like, you can't have it like go up like higher than your hips. Okay. So if she's telling me if she's breaking it down by step by step, and she's showing me, and I'm still not understanding, what can she do? What can she do? Um, break it down even more parts. Okay, and if she is, and I'm still not, how else can she help me? She can, um, she can, like, Let's think. What, what can she do? Come on, guys, how would you help her to teach me? I need a little bit more help, so what can we do? Um, you guys can get another ball and then do it together. Okay, what else can we do? You guys can get more detail. Mm -hmm. um, she can show it to you slowly. Mm -hmm. um, she can... So tell me how you help. How do you help someone? Do you just keep explaining it? No. No, how do you help someone? Maybe you can put them in the position that they need to be in. So how would you do that? Come um, here. So when you help me, how are you helping? Are you helping me with your words? No, you can use your hands. Use your hands. your hands, yeah. Don't be afraid and you can, you can help me. So why don't you help me do it? And you can help me by putting your hand on my hands and helping me do it, okay. right? So. Okay, and you can do it with me, yeah. Yeah. And dribbling is the harder one, but we can do it with catching. So whenever we work on catching, thank you, we start with the scarf. Any ideas why we start with the scarf? 
Why would we start with the scarf? Because if you throw it, it's not as hard to hurt your leg. It's not going to hurt you. What else? It's lighter. It's lighter. What else? It um, travels slower. It falls slower. Exactly. So if I'm working on catching, why don't you two come and teach me how to catch? Okay, so how are you going to teach me how to catch? So first, um, let's start with overhand. So well, I'm catching, so not throwing, catching. You want me to catch it. So you want to, so for, you want to do it like. Yeah, you're going to drop it in my hands first, okay? So let's say he's dropping it in my hands and I can't catch it. How are you going to help me? What did we say helping? How do we help? Do we help with words? You can, exactly. So why don't you help me? So you want to hold my hands? You're dropping it and he's helping me. There we go. And if I'm still not doing it, what can we do? Any, do you want to come and help too? Come and help me. How can we help me? Okay, drop it in my hands. You can put your hands more closer to each other so okay. it won't fall through. Okay, so if you're explaining it and I'm still not getting it, go ahead. And I'm still not doing it and I need help. How are you going to help me? Um, Remember, helping isn't just with words. Who can come? Who thinks they can come and help me? Can you come and help me? So, like, you can, like, hold your hands together. Exactly. Go ahead. See how she's doing it with me? Thank you so much. So that's helping me, it's doing it with me, okay? So remember, when you guys are working with the little ones, you're going to be coaches, and coaches encourage, they teach, they help you get better, and they help, they actually help you, okay? And everything we do is going to have steps. So there's going to be ways to make it easier and ways to make it harder. So if we're on catching and I need it to be easier, what's the way that we make it easier? Go ahead. Um, I can break it down step by step and like do it with them. What, how would you set me up? Go ahead. Um, by showing them and then maybe doing it with them. Doing it with them? And how would you make it harder if it's catching? What could you do to make this a little bit harder? Go ahead. Maybe use another, like, an uh, actual ball. Yeah. You can change what you're, throw, what you're doing, or you could throw it higher. Or you could take a step back. So that's what you guys are going to be doing on a week by week. And before we start each activity, we'll talk about what we're doing, and we'll talk about ways to make it easier and ways to make it harder. Okay? So now Ms. Pita is going to come and talk to you a little bit. So I want to talk to you about the students that you're going to be working with. Um, so... Who can tell me what part of our body controls everything that we do and that we say? Our brains. Our brains. Okay, so with our, with our kids, not everybody's brains works the same. But that doesn't make it better and that doesn't make it worse. It makes it different. So our little guys' brains work a little bit differently. So how many of you have little brothers and sisters at home? <laughs> nephews. nephews, cousins. Okay, um, how old are our students, Miss Victoria? They're about three, four. Three and four. So already their brains are a little bit different because they're not, they're, they're little. Their brains are still growing and developing. But on top of that, they also have something else going on with their brain that makes it sometimes a little bit harder for them to learn. So that means you have to have extra, what, with them? Patience. Patience, okay? And the other thing that happens with them is that if you're talking to them and giving them a lot of directions and they try this, try that, that's, that's going to be hard for them. So we're going to try to make our words simple and few. With our, with our kids. And you can say the same words, you know, several times. It's okay to do that. But just remember that they're little and their brains are working a little bit differently. And so you have to adjust to help them with all the skills that Ms. Victoria talked to you about. So some of the things that our students have 
um, I think we have some students with autism. Have you heard that word, autism? Who can tell me anything that they know about autism? Yes, sir. Uh, maybe they have like a problem or something? Or what kind of problem? Um, maybe it could be different problems. Okay, okay. yes ma'am. Autism is like when you can't really react with others. Okay, yes, they have a hard time with uh, interacting with people. Yes, ma'am. Um, like, some, um, like something is um, going wrong with their brains that they can't operate their bodies correctly. Okay, but it's different. We don't want to say wrong, but you hit the nail on the head. It's different. They're kind of working a little bit differently. Yes, ma'am. Do you know somebody with autism? Well, I've met somebody with it, and my little brother needs special needs. Okay, okay. So, on top of everything else that I told you, we have to consider those things with our students with autism. So, they have a hard time taking information in. So you're gonna to try to make the information as simple as you can with them. And you know how Miss Victoria was showing you how you help them with your hands? Your, your hand over hand help? That might be what you have to do with our, with our autistic students. Um, the other thing is that sometimes, you know how you're all sitting here and you're listening and you're looking at me and boy, are you focused? Sometimes they have a really, really hard time with that and they're doing little circles on their bottoms, and you're telling them, come here, and they're going like this. And so, if you're having a hard time with a student, you, you're not the disciplinarian. You don't have to, it's not your job to try to make them behave and listen. If you're having a hard time with one of your athletes, you can ask Miss Victoria or another adult in the class to come and help you with your, with your athlete. We also, do we have any students with Down syndrome? I'm not sure. I'm not Have you heard of that word, Down syndrome? Okay, that's another condition that makes it, um, that makes learning um, different for, for some students. Uh, and sometimes they can be really stubborn. But I, that's, I love that about children with Down syndrome. They get stubborn and they're not going to move. But that's okay because you can just sit there and sit next to them and get to know them. Once they get to know you, and they trust you, then they, they'll respond to you better. But it might take a while. It might take two weeks, it might take three weeks, sometimes longer than that. But you just remember to be patient with them. You're, you're, you're their friend, you're their coach, you're their peer buddy, and that's, uh, that's your job, okay? Does anybody have any questions about the students that, that you're gonna be working with? Yes. How many coaches are we going to have for each um, athlete? Um, athlete. Um, it'll probably be close to one-on-one, -on -one, and there might be times where we double up. Some students are going to need a little bit more help, so we might ask you to help out one of your classmates. Any other questions? I think they're ready. I have one other um, exercise that I forgot to do. Okay, so who wants to pretend to be my coach? Come here, you're, you're gonna be my coach. So you're gonna coach me on catching. And let's just say he's coaching me. Let's see if I'm ready to learn. Okay, so coach me. Remember, you're gonna explain and you're gonna show me. So what you have to do, um, oh, so. <laughs> am I gonna listen? Am I gonna know what to do? No. Why not? How can you tell that I'm not gonna pay any attention? Because you're, you're distracted. I'm distracted. So how can you tell if I'm paying attention and if I'm ready to learn? Maybe if um, they're looking at them. If they're or... looking at them. So here's a great tip, and you're going to do this all year long. If, you're, if your partner is not looking at you, they are not paying attention. So what are some things he could do to get my attention? Mm -hmm. or what tap else? Their tap their shoulder. What else could you do? So another thing is that I'm smaller, and if I'm not paying attention, what could he do to get my eye attention? 
Any ideas? He's up there, I'm right here. He could kneel down. He could kneel down and get to my eye level. So you can get to eye level and you can make sure that they're paying attention to you, okay? Because that's gonna be a tip. Before you start, if they're not looking at you, they are not listening to you, all right? Thank you. You guys ready to be coaches? Yes. Yeah, you excited? Yes. yes. Okay, so also remember, if someone isn't understanding and they're not getting it, does that mean that they're just not good at it? No. No, no. what does that mean? Go ahead. Yeah, or maybe the way you're saying, yeah, maybe the way you're saying it. In different words. Exactly. So you might have to do it in different words. You might have to make a little game of it. You might have to say, don't let it touch the floor. Okay? Well, I think you guys are ready. Did you have any questions for us? So starting next week, coaches, you guys are on duty. You guys ready for that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and remember, if there's any questions when we're doing that, raise your hand. If you're having issues, you don't know what to do, raise your hand, and there's going to be adults here, and we're going to come and help you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. I'm excited to get started.